the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So God has many names based on the experiences of people with Him. If they found him as a provider, they captured that dimension and named him Rafa. Every time they wanted to go out of lack and poverty, they did not just call a savior randomly. They would invoke the dimension that was responsible for that outcome. Are we together now? So just merely calling upon God, 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 it, it looks very spiritual, but it's not intelligent. God has names. Remember when Moses met the God of the Hebrews, he said, who will I go and tell Pharaoh and send me? Moses was being trained to be the next Pharaoh in Egypt. And they named his gods according to their areas of proficiency. So he said, now that you are appearing to me, what is your area of expertise? What is your name? And God said, go and tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. It's a mysterious name. That means I do not have a dimension. I only break myself for the sake of your understanding. Go and tell Pharaoh, I am not one of the least of the thousands of gods in Egypt. Tell him I am and send you. Hallelujah. So the way the Holy Ghost works is that he is at work in us, the Bible declares, both to will and to do. And the way he does it is that by the intelligence of the spirit, he knows the dimension of God that needs to be revealed by time, per season. And he plans the hunger to invoke that dimension in the saints. So that the saints now begin to call that dimension in prayer, in worship. And then God comes, not just as God, but he comes as touching the name that has been invoked. Are we together now? Yes. So when we sing songs like this, that you are a shield for me, you are my glory, you are the lifter up of my head. When you sing songs like you are my rock, you are my fortress, my deliverer, it is a dimension of God you are acknowledging, but it's a dimension of God you want to see show up again. Are we blessed? God is many things according to scripture. And then the Bible reveals to us that it is not unusual. Listen carefully. It is not unusual for believers to face challenges. It is not unusual for believers to have moments, individually and territorially speaking, where it looks like the arsenals of darkness. Wage war against the saints. The Bible here and there tells us, number one, that the whole world lies in wickedness. Number two, the Bible tells us, according to the revelation given to the psalmist, that there are arrows that fly by day, that there are noisome pestilences, there are destructions that wait in noon day. Job said he will deliver me from six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That the tongues of men are in the similitude of arrows. They can come and program climates of disfavor upon the saints. So challenging situations and circumstances are not unusual. One of the strangest expressions in the Bible that there was war in heaven. There was war where? In heaven. In heaven. The throne of God, there was war. So it is not unusual to have challenges. It is not unusual to have moments where the saints become perturbed by the vicissitudes of life. But then in the economy of God, there is a provision. There are provisions. I call them systems of advantage. And they are captured in his name. For instance, the Bible says, the name of the Lord, the 
does not only say it is a strong tower. There is a dimension of that name that can become a strong tower to the saints. He says the righteous run into it. So it's not every time you call the name. There are times you can run into the name and find safety. Do you know how to run into the name? Are we blessed? that are most challenging especially for the body of Christ all over the globe there is no time in modern history that the church the body of Christ has been under the assaults of darkness as we as we watch the moments unfold that lead to the coming of Christ we see the palpable agitation of hell through the governmental systems of the cosmos, through the economy, through the health sector, we just know that there is an onslaught of hell attempting to destroy the liberty of the saints. And it's one thing to be a Christian, a well-meaning child of God, but there is another thing to be able to understand the systems of advantage. God will never leave his people without a provision that demonstrates his might. When a flood was about to come, 120 years before that flood, he called on a man called Noah and said, Noah, build an ark of Gopher wood, three stories. Let that be the system of security and safety. And whoever ignored that ark paid the price as the rain came. The Bible says the deep broke forth and the heavens released her rain also. And only Noah, his wife, the three sons, and, and, and their wives were secured. And then the animals that came. And do you know the Bible says that the coming of Christ will also be like the days of Noah again. That means there will be a repetition of the things that transpired. There's no time I would have shown you that it was not just a flood. The flood came to correct something. The Bible talks about beings that were not pure humans, that began to interact with the race and brought a lot of corruption. They increased the atrocity. They, they multiplied the evil, the potential of wickedness in the hearts of men. Can I tell you this? There is, there is a limit to which the human spirit unassisted can fabricate evil. There are dimensions of evil that prove that man was assisted by beings that were not human. When an accident happens, you will notice that men will run and come to rescue, regardless of tribe, regardless of religion. That's man for you. But there are levels of wickedness and evil that when you see, you know that this is more than the natural potential of a man. There are spirits that have come to plant in and fabricate all sorts of evil. The days of no man. That the coming of the Son of Man again will be the similitude of the days of Noah. That means there will be interactions upon the earth and these beings will come and plant a plethora of wickedness and men will be buffeted by the evil intentions of men. But the Bible says that it is at that time that Savior shall arise from Zion and that they will even judge the Mount of Israel. And I believe by the Spirit of the Lord that God put forth this meeting as a way to give him worship for them to challenge the saints again to wake up because we are at times when spiritual ignorance can cost us a lot. Isaiah lamented seeing these days in chapter 60 and verse 1. And he says, Arise, shine, he said, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He did not leave us in the dark. He said, For darkness shall cover the earth, even gross darkness the people. I want to share with us very quickly, if you do not know, that I believe the saints can engage in these things to be able to circumvent the activities of darkness, to thrive, 
and then to reveal the light and power and the glory of God. Can I tell you this? The excellence of the name of the Lord, the excellence of the might of God is shown at times like this. All through scripture, you find out that unfavorable situations brought great glory to the name of the Lord. Was it the burning furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Was it Daniel in the lion's den? You name it. That every time hell seemed to push an onslaught against the church, it was an opportunity for the Father to be glorified. Someone shouts, say, Lord, be glorified. One more time, say, Lord, be glorified. In Nigeria, in Africa, be glorified. Can you turn it into a prayer in one minute? In the midst of the chaos, oh God of heaven, be glorified. Search for yourself glory. Out of the chaos, out of the pain, out of the ashes. In the midst of everything that does not seem to make sense. We declare, oh God, that we will lift up the banner of the glory of Christ, even among the nations. Somebody is praying. That he will be glorified. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the confusion that plagues the government of nations, that there is a system in the dealings of God with men, that when they proud them, they pride themselves in, in their accomplishments and their achievements. In fact, the Bible says it this way, the wrath of man will praise me. That in the midst of the foolishness and the pride of mortal men, God is able to draw and fetch glory once again and reveal to creation that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Two keys very quickly, please take it for me. Two keys that will help us to survive times like this and experience the reality of the name of the Lord as a fortress as a system of defense. Can I tell you this? Please take seriously what you are hearing because the times we live in will test your knowledge of this name of the Lord. Every believer that names the name of Christ, do you know when you stand to pledge your allegiance and say, your majesty, I give my life, I give my heart, I give my everything. You have registered your name in the realm of the spirit as a victim of any and every demonic onslaught. They will not leave any stone unturned to see that they ruin your life if possible. Your system of defense will be your knowledge. Your knowledge. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Is God blessing someone? The first key. Psalm 18 and verse 2. It says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I wish you can see in verse 3. If you can, we'll read together, otherwise just listen. I will call upon the Lord. That is the first key. I will call upon the Lord. Not I will assume the Lord knows I need him. I will verbalize my need and call upon the Lord. This is the ministry of the priesthood of the saints. It is the ministry of prayer, but not just prayer, um, sadly and respectfully speaking, for the average believer, our idea of prayer is just a platform for reception. A platform that allows me to receive my daily bread, my daily needs, but it's much more than that. He spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, the Bible declares that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray, provided you are a man. The only exception to that scripture is anyone who is a species that is not a man. But if you are a man, he mandates that all men pray and not faint. Are we together? The ministry of prayer as a system that invokes the defense system of heaven. You know, many of 
those who may have heard me share it in my teachings, humorously, I do not know how many people call me all the time and say, Apostle, are you about to travel? I say, yes. And they say, please don't travel. I just saw a ghastly motor accident. I just saw an onslaught from hell to destroy you. And they are right. Except that there is a system of defense. If you live in fear, you will never do anything for the kingdom. There is no special day for the devil to, to destroy you. He is ever hungry and thirsty. The Bible says he's called a thief that cometh not except to kill, to steal, to destroy. The dominion of the saints is in our ability to feed for the intent of hell, regardless of the intent of hell. We come in with superior intelligence, with a dimension of power and grace that confounds principalities and powers. Say amen. amen. The priesthood is the saints. Did you know that there is a system of power, an advantage that was given to the believer? Not men of God, not preachers, not apostles, not prophets. The saints in light. God would not have left us without a system of defense. And he showed us very graphically in Luke 18. The Bible says, men ought always to pray and not to fail. Then it gives us a story to buttress on that point. It said there was in a city, the Bible says, a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. May you never meet such a judge in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. A judge that does not fear God and a judge that did not regard them. And then the Bible says there was in that same city a widow. It gives us the picture of a defenseless woman. Are we together? That her source of fortress and defense have been taken away. And then the Bible says even though she seemed weak, there was an ability that she sustained. She went to the judge and said, avenge me my adversary. And the Bible says, for a moment, he would ignore her. But for her importunity, the Bible says, her persistence, her staying power, that I may not have the ability to fight you. I may not be able to manipulate the law. And even though you do not fear God, you do not respect men. But I know there is something I can do to you. Consistency. And the judge said, testifying himself, even though I do not fear God and I do not regard men, but I will have to avenge this woman because of her consistently coming to me that she wearies me. A principle, it tells you the power of prayer, my goodness, that a weak person here in Lagos, a weak person here in Nigeria, a weak person in the US, you may seem weak in your own strength, but you can petition, you can go to the parliament of heaven and begin to manipulate spiritual things in the place of prayer. You look weak until prayer comes. Anything plus prayer is a stronger version of it. The priesthood ministry of the saints. You do not know how cheap Satan is, I tell you, until you learn to generate power in the spirit. I'm not talking of prayer that while you are praying, you are browsing. Uh -uh. The heart felt. The Bible did not leave us to guess the kind of prayer that produces results. In James chapter 5 and verse 13, Apostle James was teaching us and he said, Is any man afflicted? The remedy for affliction is let him pray. He didn't say let him discuss. He didn't say let him go around talking about his issues. Uh -uh. The first response when a believer is taught by the vicissitudes of life, whether you understand it or not, your first response is to pray. Of certain the 12, and read the first 10 verses. 
it says prayer was going on. The brethren began and the chains fell off and then the angel began to lead him through the gates. Watch this. He came out of the first gate and thought it was a vision. He came out of the second gate and then the Bible says when he got to the iron gate that leads to the city. Ah, so there is a gate that stops your influence. The iron gate opens you to the city. That if that gate opens, your ministry must open. If that gate opens, your voice must open. That at least you can be out of the prison, but you are not yet in the city. When you pray, the first gate is broken, but your influence is not yet established. But it's an iron gate, and the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. There are powers that sit upon the influence of the saints, gifted people, anointed people, and yet it seems like a generation cannot take and place a demand upon the grace of God in your life. It's not by human connection. You must travel in the spirit until the iron gate is broken in the spirit. It is the gate that leads to the city. It is the gate. This is a prophetic word for someone. This is why the nations are not placing a demand. It's not because you are not called. It's not because you are not anointed. You have not sustained the technology. There is a God that hear ye him anointed. If it is not of you, no matter the dimension of grace, you will not be heard. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye me. Has that grace come upon your business? Has that grace come upon your ministry? Jesus went by that grace to the wilderness and people came to listen to him. He went upon a mountain and they came. I'm praying to my God who is your God that right now as in this atmosphere of worship may this grace that can open you up to the influence that is in the city may it come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank <laughs> you. 
I believe in prayer. I really believe in prayer. Because it works. The Bible says, when a demon leaves a man, please listen to me, believers, that when a demon leaves a man, that demon goes to desert regions, is that true? And not finding a place of rest, it will say, I will return to my house. He's still calling that man, my house. The man is not aware that he's still a house, but the spirit is still saying, that is still my house. My question is, what happened to the demon in the desert that without a prayer warrior, the demons could not stay there? Because if your life can become like that desert to them, they will leave you. I found out that there is one thing that happens in the desert. There is extreme heat. There is fire and heat in the desert. And that the demon goes to the desert without anyone praying there. The atmosphere and the temperature is and he says, I prefer to go back and be threatened in that body than to remain here. The Bible says he makes his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire. That when your life becomes that hot, when your life becomes on fire, I tell you sincerely, was it not the fire that exposed the fire? The fire was hiding in the wood. But when they set that wood on fire, the fire could no longer hide. That your life will become on fire. On fire in a way and a manner that whether you are awake or asleep, it's still the same thing. The fire is still burning. I pray for your prayer life. Whatever has brought your prayer life down, I stand by the grace of God and I declare unto you fresh fire upon your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, Psalm 18. Let me hurry up because we need to praise. God bless you so much. Verse 3. I will call upon the Lord. That's the first key. The second key, who is worthy to be praised? I will call upon him in prayer, but I will call upon him with an awareness that he is worthy, deserving of praise. I wrote down here the second key that makes the Lord reveal himself as a mighty fortress in the life of the believer is gratitude that is expressed in praise. Not just gratitude, gratitude that is expressed in praise. I submit to you believers, there is, there is, there is such power in praise that comes from the standpoint of gratitude. If praise is not an expression of gratitude, it is not true praise. Mm -mm. Psalm 34 and verse 1. Popular psalm. I will bless the Lord at all times, he says. At all times. At all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Father, thank you. I give you praise. I give you praise. And the devil says, are you aware that this year was not a very good year financially? And while he said that the spirit of faith shuts the mouth of darkness and says, Lord, you are the reason why it was not worse. It's the one you know about. But there are many unseen battles. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you
There are many unseen battles, believers. There are times when the devil would have taken us cheaply as a prey, but for the mercy and the goodness of God. Praise that comes from a standpoint of thanksgiving. You must train your eyes to see what God has done, not just what you want him to do. You must train your eyes. Lord, you are faithful. I'm complaining about bread, but I thank you for the tea I have. You see, society programs us to easily observe what God has not done. Lord, I've been talking about these things. You, you, you've not done it. Are you not God? Can't you do it? And God says, what about the one that I've done? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not. You must pray for your memory. Memory, you must remember that God was faithful last year. You must remember that God was faithful January, February, March. You pass the road and just passing it, someone else died there. According to the plan of the enemy, it would have been you, but for the mercy and the grace of God. How many prayer warriors died this year in your presence? How many fasting giants died while you were going down spiritually? Gratitude that is expressed in praise. Psalm 65 from verse 5 to 7. That's where the key is. Psalm 65. When I'm rounding up, um, is it alright if I invite you when I'm rounding up? This is your son, God of Vengeance. You know, coincidentally, it was just a few weeks ago. I, 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 I was praying and then I just checked and I, I, I saw I said, my God, this is so powerful. Is it alright if you see that song here? In the name of Jesus, I tell you the truth. Everything that does not name the name of Christ that followed you or anyone connected to you to this program, except God is not God, He must be doing this In the name of Jesus Christ. For some of you, the year is not over. You will not see New York until you hold your testimony. I'm not just motivating you. It is seen to communicate a dimension of grace that you do not have. The Bible says that we minister according to the measure of grace. Psalm 65. From verse 5. It says. Where are we? Seven, I meant to say to you. Psalm 67 from verse 5. Let the people praise thee. Oh God, let the people praise thee. And then the Bible says the earth, my goodness. Do you know that this earth you see is not just a ground? The earth is a universal point of contact. Everything touches the earth. Your destiny helper's feet is on this earth now. I hope you know. Oh yes. The earth is a universal point of contact. Everything makes contact with the earth. So when the Bible says the earth should yield that increase, it's not just talking about the ground. Uh -uh. We are instructed by our Creator that every time men praise, the earth should not be quiet. Listen, I'm sharing with you a powerful principle. This is not some Scientology or some nonsense. No. I show you the secret behind the mysterious lifting of men. There is no body who rises by the snake. There's no such thing as that. We engage the mysteries of the kingdom. One of it is praise that is an expression of gratitude. If you don't have songs in English, find one in your tribe. You are not speaking to men. If you can't sing, find someone to sing for you. Praise your song and praise him, praise him, praise him, and you are sweating and dancing when the act of God was to be taken by.
back to Jerusalem. The Bible records, look at me. The Bible records that David was dancing and praising. And the daughter of Saul said, Mr. Man, do you not know that you are royalty? Why are you embarrassing yourself like this? He said, I'm dancing before the God that took the kingdom from your father and gave me. So he does not take it from me and give another. God had her and she died by it. That is an expression of gratitude. Sometimes you may cry, still praise. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Let me give you the last key. I said two, but I just sense in my spirit to add one more. The last key is the power of the prophetic. The Bible says, listen carefully. And by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. So it was the Lord that brought them. But he used a prophet. He says, and by a prophet, they were preserved. Now, sadly and unfortunately, I'm not here to make trouble. But I know that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry has in many regards not been, it's not expressed itself in, in the purest version and the best. But that does not mean that those ministries will not exist. Within the boundaries of scripture, let me tell you this, the prophetic is a powerful tool that can create a system of defense that can make for the and the writing of men. Listen very carefully. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say restore. There has to be a voice that prohibits the hand of darkness and says restore. Restore. Thus far have you come that no further shall you go. I will see at Abana. Whether it is a prophetic that comes through worship, whether it is a prophetic that comes, listen, there is a language, the only language the devil understands is the language of power. And 66 verse 3, say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. So when we sing songs like God of Vengeance, we are invoking a dimension to say, Lord, arise in your majesty and power. Become a fortress and judge what mocks you in my life. That there are things and there are people that have lift up them, themselves and say, where is your God? There are families that the devil is saying, I told you that this year will be a miserable year. And upon your life, it used to still happen. And God wants to stand up. There are not many times where God stands up. Go and read your Bible. It says, Arise, O God. When God arises, it's not just stretching to sit down again. Uh -uh. Arise, O God, and let your enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. We are going to pray over this platform, over the voices that have come to minister in word and in song over your life and over the crowd of people who would have been ministered to, we can still reach them. Listen, the realm of the spirit is so powerful huh, that right from where you are, the person who should be saved from this program can still be saved while he's at home and he's wondering what is happening to me. I know I would have been in the field now, but I can't. I, why am I feeling broken? Because the saints are demonstrating a level of intensity over time, over matter. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? So shortly, maybe his team can come up. I'm going to invite Jesus to come in. Is that right? And he's going to sing this song, God of Vengeance. Sing it with your heart. I want you to open up your spirit. Afterwards, in two, three minutes, I want to pray for you. Listen, I assure you something must change in your life. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. While you are preparing, please rise up in one minute. And I'd like you to begin to pray first for yourself, for your family. Lord, stand for me as a mighty, terrible one. You are a fortress. 
even at times like this, I decree and declare that I, I escape danger like the bird from the snare of the fowler. Someone is praying. Lift your voice and begin to pray.
name of Jesus, who are thou mountain that stands before the over there, threatening the name of the Lord over my life. You're not just going to pray for yourself alone. He said, as for me and my house. If you are saying the Lord, especially in Nigeria, you are not free. You have to pray for your loved ones too. As for me and my house, God of vengeance, in this atmosphere of worship, arise, lift your voice and pray. Someone is praying for the death of your
don't generalize and conclude just because there are people who have made their price by the grace of God. There's no reason just closing and going when God wants to come to life for that. Are we together now? The prophetic is coming on someone. But please, just please. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what looks like a shadow. It's resting on one person. There's someone who has been praying and who has been panting after God. The power of God is coming over that because the Lord is ministering to me. This is a very strong prophetic grace. Please bring that person. My friend, bring them. Bring that gentleman. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I mean Baru Pasia. Hold them, please. Whether you are not or not, bring them out. One more for the
and you are into the worship ministry, I want to pray for you. You don't need to come out. But right where you are, please open your spirit. There are songs that we must receive from heaven. There are songs of revival. The Bible says we will sing the songs of Miriam. These are songs that come from the eyes that see. Songs for the season. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, you have anointed me for the world. I declare that everyone here who is into the ministry of Samistry. First, I pray in the name of Jesus that your heart be genuinely purified. So that you are not just a musician. That, that your heart is truly a living sacrifice. That more than the words that come, your heart, your, your desire becomes to reveal Jesus and to glorify him. And then I pray for you. The grace and the unction that brings songs from heaven. I stretch my hands right now and I declare, oh God, wherever they are, my God will scoop me up. We immerse you into this ministry of service. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now in one minute, I'd like you to pray. Everything you do not want to see in your life again and your family. I'm releasing my faith with you. Please lift your voice and let's pray. We are believers. Let's not waste this moment. I can go separate like a man. On the that answers prayer.
for spiritual things. This has nothing to do with men of God. If someone pray, Lord, ignite my life. Set me on fire. My spiritual life come alive. Like the dry bones in the valley of Ezekiel. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Who have 
have been here right from the beginning of this program, laboring in the spirit, standing, worshiping. I understand it's supposed to be a larger meeting, but because of the, the, the times and the pandemic and many of you still made that sacrifice, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, who is called the Reward. It says that he that cometh unto God must come believing that he exists and then that he is a rewarder. May the rewarder reward you. May the rewarder honor you. May the lift and lift you. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that all the sacrifices that are gone into this, this program, I understand that men and women have given their time, their resources, their energy. We do not take it for granted. We are responsible people. First, I acknowledge and we salute and celebrate every investment that has gone into this meeting. The Bible says that we commend them that will well, that they deserve double honor. I pray in the name of Jesus that the bands from which the resources came, both human and material, they will never go down. Even as the prophet spoke over the widow in Zarephath, in the name of Jesus, the wine and the oil and the bread will never be spent. In the name of Jesus. And then I pray for all those who have participated in various ways. In the name of Jesus, may my God, who is also your God, reward and honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to appreciate you for this honor and this opportunity to be a blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. Be you here in advance. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata pa kotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.